Hello, everyone. Welcome to Hims TV. My name is Mike Milliard. I'm executive editor of Healthcare IT News, and I'm here today with Jonathan Weiner, who's professor uh, and a founding co-director of Johns Hopkins Health Center for Health Population Health IT. Welcome, Jonathan. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. As we all know, you know, good data is an absolute must-have for effective AI machine learning projects. So, from your point of view, as kind of a pop health analytics guy, what are some of the basic table stakes? You know, you know, data governance must have for for a good machine learning project. AI, artificial intelligence, and machine learning. That really is sort of a buzzword, a code word for the future of, of big data, computer analytics, uh, uh, in everything we do in healthcare. You know, not just hospital focus, but also community and population health. But the core, one of the core data sources, of course, are hospitals and other healthcare systems. And to get directly to your question, I think without good data, without clean data, without well curated data that's interoperable, it's hopeless, in my opinion, to, to try to do AI and machine learning and expect that to solve it. So mm -hmm. clearly having frameworks uh, that uh, uh, lead to standardization where possible, uh, often AI and machine learning uh, uh, counteracts uh, uh, lousy data, but it's better to have clean data to start with. And one of the biggest challenges, particularly for hospitals, is interoperability. It's tough enough having data uh, across departments, for example, within a hospital, and then you take a single hospital across the system. And then most of us get our care, not just in hospitals, but in ambulatory settings and, and other. So I think interoperability is, is another uh, key word. So governance, when I think about governance, I often think about moving outside the individual institution. Ideally, it'd be wonderful if we had data governance and curation across the community level, but, but that's a ways off. Well, what are some keys then, if we're talking about access, you know, to, to kind of getting your arms around all that data, you've got some clinical systems, you know, financial systems in different silos, and you may have even data that could be useful, but you don't even know it exists somewhere. Um, you know, what, what's, what are some keys to um, efficient and effective access? Well, certainly, uh, we have to have a collaborative system that we, we, we try to have goals that go beyond, uh, you know, the individual service delivery. But I mean, you can start there, obviously, certain certain goals and targets for individual service. But no, I, I think some of the initiatives that HIMSS has about uh, trying to, to, to move toward a collaborative and, and community oriented models are, are right on target. So again, understanding what it's about, it's about health. Uh, it's not just about the production of the single unit. Um, and I, I think that increasingly though, let's be honest, without incentives, financial incentives, regulatory incentives, it's not gonna happen. So I, I think that you know, government, payers, uh, uh, data vendors, and of course, providers really all need to be on the same page. And, and uh, I can't say is that uh, always happens. So, you know, this is an AI event, you know, obviously you've been, you know, swimming in these population health waters for a while and, you know, dealing with analytics for years. But, you know, as we look past, you know, basic analytics and more towards advanced algorithms and, and machine learning models, what are some of the areas and use cases you're most excited about on the pop health front when it comes to that? Well, first of all, now and forevermore, we are going to have more, more higher order analytics, you know, whether or not you want to label it AI or machine learning. But frankly, you know, good analytics uh, using advanced statistics, advanced economics, ad ad advanced uh, data mining uh, without advanced AI uh, really needs the same requirements. I mean, you need to have uh, uh, clean data, focused data, interoperable data, just as we were talking about. Mm -hmm. But to answer your question, you know, AI and machine learning, I think it uh, can be overrated. When you, do, when you see good data, good analysis compared to good data, good analysis with AI, the difference isn't really uh, 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 that high. Uh, I think often we use uh, uh, AI machine learning as, as the fill in for lousy data. I think the future now and forevermore will increasingly involve these higher order techniques. And also we have to understand that when we say AI and machine learning, it's not just applied analytics. It can be applied to sensing, it can be applied actually having an impact, robotics. Uh, and, and, and as we all know, we, we've just started the journey. I, I often tell, you know, our, our, our journey for the last 10 years has been collecting the data. Uh, and, you know, now we're at 100% of hospitals and, uh, you know, 95% of doctors. Now we're just starting to use it. So I think uh, uh, we, we're, we're only scratching the surface. And uh, I um, do believe that uh, where we're more mature has to do with with when the data is extremely clean, like imaging mm -hmm. uh, and uh, visual uh, uh, type of applications where it's very clear what, what a radiologist might be looking for. And AI really has made a difference in administrative and in broad complex uh, clinical management where patients may have a, 
uh, dozens and dozens of diagnoses. Uh, I, I don't think AI has uh, really had a chance to, to uh, uh, move us very far, far forward. Yeah, it is early days yet, and we've seen certainly uh, in recent years some of the limitations of some of these models. You know, we hear about algorithm, algorithmic bias, and uh, you know, sure. What are some keys to avoiding that beyond the kind of basic, you know, data governance and you know, rigorous yeah. approach to, to the data? Bias, management? The bias is a very important uh, issue. I'm glad you uh, mentioned that. Particularly, you know, at a school of public health, the Johns Hopkins School of Public Health, we have something called the Center for Population Health IT. Mm -hmm. So we're very concerned about ethical issues, social social issues, um, uh, 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 racial bias. And so, yes, but it's not as always as it seems. There could be bias uh, due to misapplication. There could be bias because the people that you uh, have special concerns about aren't in the data. There could be bias that's based on, 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 on true uh, you know, bi uh, biased behavior, but that's not really the case. So uh, bias can creep in, in in many different ways. Uh, so for sure, we should all be sensitive to it. We need, stance, uh, to answer your question, we need standards that should be followed. Uh, we should test it and look at uh, uh, you know, whether or not it's race or, or, or ethnic group to make sure that it behaves the same. Uh, sometimes because, uh, as we now know in randomized trials, because certain populations aren't in, in the, the trial, the drug may not work for them. Likewise, if certain populations aren't in the database, it may not apply to them. Uh, so we, for example, are uh, we've developed something called the Johns Hopkins ACGs, which are very widely used uh, uh, around the world for predictive modeling and ambulatory and primary care and in population health. Uh, we purposely designed it to work with many uh, minority and, and special populations, but we constantly check it and assess it and, and make sure that biases haven't creeped in. So it really is a, an ongoing activity. You know, I guess before I let you go, what else, you know, have you got cooking there at the Center for Population Health IT? What are some projects you're excited about? These yeah, days? this is, well, this is a challenging time, obviously, with, with COVID. And COVID is certainly brought to the fore uh, in Johns Hopkins uh, uh, COVID Resource Center is, I think, one of the, the most widely used in the world. Uh, Four billion with a B hits a day we get. Wow. Uh, I'm only indirectly involved in that. But, but we, we've certainly seen that, that, that data is, is key to, to uh, decision making. Uh, we, we at CFIT are, are very excited that uh, we were one of the first to, to use claims and administrative data for population health and public health back in the uh, 80s and 90s, actually. And now electronic health records, as you know, are ubiquitous and, and uh, your members have, have made great advances. But I can't say is right now they're applied to population health or beyond medical care models. So that's one of the bigger areas. And another area is uh, everyone talks about social determinants of health. It's somewhat of a I call it a social Gartner hype cycle. You know, we, we're expecting too much, I think, from quote, SDOH data, social determinant of health data. However, mm -hmm. like most hype cycles, um, it, it really has uh, many applications. So we're spending a lot of time getting past the hype and doing uh, NLP natural language processing to try to identify social data. We're also in the EMR, that is. Uh, we're also uh, linking in geographic data and we're linking in non-medical data. You know, of course, uh, 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 Google and Amazon uh, mine all these data to sell us stuff. We mine all the data to try to help people. So it's a really very exciting time. And uh, I'm very glad that, that, that HIMSS is spending uh, you know, more focus on these areas. And you know, I appreciate you inviting me, Mike. I appreciate you being here. You're doing great work. So thank you so much. Bye-bye.